shoot you the truth just in case you didn't know, baby. I believed he was going to make it. I didn't know what he was going to do, you know, but I just had always, um, some kids you can tell, um, they don't want to change, they don't want to do anything different. And Lee would at least listen. He might not always take your advice, you know, or tell, you know, do what you've asked him to do, but he would listen to you and that makes a huge difference. When you talk about the music scene, if you don't bring up Lee's name, then something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. He's always been that type of person. Everything he said he was going to do, he'd done it. And he's never switched his style up. He always kept God first and took off. So we like to call him the Dean of, of gospel music down here in Fort Smith. Uh, his music is so tight, man. I mean, I believe that he can compete with the best. And what I mean, I'm not just talking about Christian music, but I'm talking about secular too. He can compete with the best. And so uh, when I think about his music uh, and how he's contributed to, to, to Arkansas, I believe a whole lot because he's consistent in what he does. He's, he never stops. He's always doing something for the community. He's pretty much the founder of gospel in Fort Smith, gospel rap. I mean, his contribution, I mean, was greatly needed because there's been a lot of lives changed from it. I mean, it helped me out a whole bunch. He just, he's a big factor. He's opened a lot of doors in the community for other artists and for like a lot of other businesses to continue doing what they're doing. Like he helps out with the Juneteenth committee. So I mean, this opened up a lot of doors. Just just bringing gospel to Fort Smith or the Arkansas area. I was born in Fort Smith. Um, my mom was living in Fort Smith and uh, we ended up moving over to Van Buren at Jesse, Jesse Turner Terrace. And uh, I remember um, back then I thought we were doing just fine. We were living like everybody else, but you can go accustomed to the way you're living. And uh, we lived there till I was about eight, and um, I got kicked out of two schools here, so they sent me to Fort Smith, to Howard, and um, I was at Howard for about a year, and then they kicked me out of there, and so we went on and moved over to Fort Smith, and uh, we moved into Allied Gardens Apartments in Midland Heights, and uh, right off the bat, it seemed like I fit in over there, but it was in a mischievous way, if that makes any sense. I think I got in about the third or fourth grade and my brother started paying me to go to church. He would pay me eleven dollars a week to go to church. It had carriage. It's not it's right across the street from Blakemore Field, Van Buren. Um, it's not a church there anymore, but yeah, he paid me and we kept going and eventually um, you know, I found Christ later on around I was probably eighth or ninth grade, but before then like I said, it just continued to spiral. I would get, just continue to get kicked out of school, and they developed this class called the Opportunity Center. And um, there was probably like seven kids in that class, and I was one of them. And they were trying to develop us to put us in a regular class because we were so disruptive. And um, I thought of, I've been thinking about it. And a couple of those guys aren't alive anymore. Um, a couple of those guys are in prison right now, and I'm one of the only guys. If you look back on that class that made it, I remember I was in I was walking down the halls and it just hit me. I almost blacked out. It was just like God spoke to me and was just like, dare to be different. You're the same. You, you don't look any different than these other guys that you're with right now. What can you do different? How can you be different? And it was at that moment that, you know, God began to change. We would have these hip hop battles, you know. At, at lunchtime in junior high, and it was crazy because I knew I was pretty good, but I didn't think I was this, this awesome hip hop rapper, you know, this, 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 this artist. And uh, it, it would just come natural to me because I wouldn't write my raps. I would just, just give me a beat and we'll go. 
And uh, it was odd because they would tell me, you know, you good, man, but you need to hear Kevin. You need to hear K-Dub. Because, see, K-Dub went to junior high across town. And um, later on, he he tells me that they used to tell him he's good, but he needs to hear me. And it's kind of funny now that now we're a group. But um, I just remember that um, hip-hop was something that made, helped me escape from a lot of harsh realities that I had to deal with at home. And, um, it, it, you know, some people, a lot of girls write diaries, some people write poetry, some people play sports or whatever. My, I played sports, but my deal was music. Some of the things that I went through coming up in life, um, which I don't talk about a whole lot because I don't like to just visit the past all the time, but I get frustrated when I hear young people say that they can't not sell drugs because of their situation or they can't not that they, they can't get a job because of their situation or they can't do this that and the third you can do whatever you need to do it, it all comes from determination and being willing to sacrifice and, and that's my that's my you know my biggest deal then and